Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I will be walking you guys through on how to create a simple checkout URL using the Stripe API. Um, so this is pretty much as simple as it gets. I mean, this is uh, beneficial if you guys have a client that requires just a quick checkout um, where they can get their, um, you know, where they, where they can get their end users or their customers to collect a payment on a particular product. Um, so in this case here, I'm just gonna run you guys through a quick demo here. This is a project that I created for a client in 2023. Um, so basically the, the gist of the form is um, the end user basically selects the t-shirt design, then they enter their information, right? So first name, last name, address, email. Um, there's a few extra fields here that I'm not going to cover. Um, and then after that, uh, the customer can enter their shirt configurations, right? So they can uh, they can purchase shirts for adults or children or both, All right? So I've already gone ahead here. I've added some collections in here. So I'm gonna hit place order. So then from there we get redirected to an order details page, which shows the customer all of the information they entered and also their shirt collections that they uh, configured, All right? And then you'll see here that we get a total before shipping and taxes. So then from here I'm gonna hit uh, get shipping rates. And then we're making a call to the Canada Post API to get live shipping rates. So I'm just going to select expedited parcel. And then here we see our final pricing or, or the final pricing structure. So total before shipping and taxes was 354 and then shipping and handling HST. And then we get a grand total of 418 and 20 cents. Um, so from here, I'm going to hit confirm order. So now JavaScript is collecting all that data. It's sending it to PHP. PHP is going to process it create the Stripe checkout, and then we get redirected here to the uh, Stripe checkout uh, uh, payment page, right? So this is uh, this is it. So this is pretty much what I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up. Um, it's not that difficult. It's actually pretty easy. Um, but if you're not familiar with the process, I think this video should help kind of clear things up and show you guys how to get this working correctly. Um, so from here, I'm just going to quickly just enter my personal information. Uh, because I'm in test mode, so you'll see here we have Stripe enabled in test mode. I can just enter <clears throat> um, just 411111 for the visa. Uh, for the expiry date, you can just make up a date. As long as it's in the future, it'll work. If it's 2022, it'll say it expired. All right, so we'll do that. 111. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I got that wrong. So my phone info is here. Vlf.ca. And then just enter a quick postal code. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna hit pay. Right. So the payment was successful. And then from there, it gets redirected back to my demo site. And then here I basically capture the order ID and I capture, uh, and I mark the order as paid in the backend in WordPress. Um, so I actually have, um, so this is actually running through WordPress and I actually uh, configured a custom uh, kind of a, a custom backend page um, where I can see all of the orders that get submitted for the form. So I can manage all of that data here. So you'll see here that we have, uh, let me make this a little bit larger. Okay, so you'll see here that we have all the data collected. I have my collections here. So these are the collections that were uh, submitted through the form, all right? And that also generates a PDF invoice. Um, yeah, so here is the payment success page. Okay. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna jump into the back end and actually, sorry, before we do that, I'm gonna show you guys um, uh, the um, Stripe developer dashboard. Uh, so basically what you're gonna wanna do is you're, go is you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to uh, sign up for a Stripe account. Um, I don't think they have two separate accounts. I think it's just a single account that you just sign up and then that gives you access to their um, developer um, dashboard, right? So I've already gone ahead here. I'm already logged into my account. To my account. So when you log in, this is pretty much what you're gonna see. You're gonna, you're gonna be presented with a dashboard. And at the top here, there's a toggle for test mode. So you can switch between test mode and production. So I currently have mine set to test mode. And then from here, you can click on developers and over here under developers, you're gonna see, so there's several tabs here that you can kind of navigate um, under API keys. So if you click under API keys, this is where you can get your publishable key and your secret key, right? So if you hit that, 
it will reveal your secret key. Uh, now, in my case, I have these blurred out because I don't want to give these credentials away. Um, but this is basically where you get that information from. And uh, when customers place orders through Stripe, you can actually see those orders under payments. So if you look here at the left um, sidebar here, this navigation system under payments, this is where all payments get recorded. All right, so this is the one that I just put through for 418.20. So if I click on that order, you can see the information was collected, the uh, payment method was collected, my email was collected, my um, postal code and also what the order was for along with the uh, total price right so that's where um, all the payments got stored right and in order for uh, in order for you to get this to work you're going to uh, after you create your developer account um, you can download the PHP package in my case I'm using PHP you might be working on a maybe on a different platform I'm not sure uh, but in my case, I'm working with WordPress and, I'm, and WordPress uses PHP as a code base. So I'm working with the PHP library. Um, so you can actually download their, um, their, their Stripe interface API directly from their GitHub page. Um, you can also use something like Composer to install it if you want to do it through the command line. That's, that's up to you. Um, but I, for, for this demo, I just kind of just downloaded it directly and I added it into my project. And um, I'll show you guys later how I, how I imported that. Um, into WordPress um, and then you can also reference the uh, Stripe API so here there's um, this is the uh, particular this, this page is um, is related to creating a session um, so this is pretty much the code that you're going to need to work with um, and this is pretty much it that's pretty much all you're going to need um, if you're working with PHP this is pretty much the code block you're going to need in order to get um, your checkout uh, session you're all created right um, they also give you other samples here if you're working with, I don't know, Node or Java or Ruby. Um, but again, in my case, I am working with PHP. So this is the code that I'm going to be working with. And uh, okay, and that's it. So that covers everything for the Stripe account and everything that um, all the functionality in the front end. Now I'm going to jump into the back end and explain to you guys how I got everything working with JavaScript and PHP through WordPress. All right, so here we are in VS Code, and this is my WordPress project that I have opened here in, v in uh, VS Code. If you look under the File Explorer here, you'll see all of the files that pertain to my WordPress theme. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the Includes folder. This is where I have the Stripe Interface API library saved, right? So this is the library that I downloaded from um, the Stripe uh, GitHub page. So I just downloaded the library and I just uh, copy and pasted that library right here into my includes folder. Um, and then under my includes folder, I have just a, you know, several PHP files here that I use for custom coding. Um, and so the, uh, we're also going to be looking at this order functions that PHP file here. Um, right, so once you, uh, once you get that Stripe interface library um, saved somewhere in your project, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to import that. So in WordPress, I, um, if you open up your functions.php file, you can actually import it through that particular file. Um, so if you're not familiar with WordPress, the functions.php file is essentially the file that you use to um, like initialize and set up your custom theme. Um, so this is where you, um, you know, there's a function here that I'm calling called ln theme setup, and this is what's doing all of the initial the initialization of my theme, right? Where I'm adding my actions, my filters, um, any other custom functions that I require for my uh, for my particular theme. Um, so if I scroll all the way to the bottom of this file, you'll see that I have a bunch of requires here. So this is all custom code that I'm working with and I'm also importing some libraries. And the very last one here, I'm importing the Stripe library. So you'll see here it's under the includes folder, Stripe interface, and I'm importing this file here, init.php. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to do to import the API library into your project. <clears throat> um, so now I'm going to jump over to the order functions.php file here. And this is the actual function that's processing all of the data from the form. Um, and then it's generating the, um, the Stripe checkout URL. So if I scroll down here, you'll see here I have Stripe configuration. Uh, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm... Um, I'm taking all of the data that's being collected by JavaScript 
And then that uh, so basically on the JavaScript side, um, you'll see here I have a custom function in JavaScript called submit order. So, uh, you know, the, um, so this function here, it's collecting all of the form data. Um, I'm, I'm creating a post data object here. I'm defining the action. So this is the function that we're going to have to communicate with on the, on the WordPress side. And then I'm just doing a spread operation here to get all the data and just store it in this uh, object. And then this post data is being passed into a custom function that I created here called fetch data, which is an async function that is um, that's sending the data to a specific URL endpoint. So you'll see here, I just have a try catch block and I have this uh, response variable here that I created, which is uh, running an await fetch. And uh, yeah, so this is sending the data to WordPress and then WordPress is processing the data and sending back a response to JavaScript. All right, so once we get that response back from PHP or from WordPress, um, we get that data checkout URL and we redirect the user to the Stripe uh, payment page, All right? Uh, but going back to the PHP file, um, so again, here I'm retrieving all of the data that's being, that's being passed to PHP from JavaScript. I'm doing all of my, I'm processing all of the data to get the final price, all right? So here I got the final price and this final price was going to be uh, passed into this checkout session uh, code block that we create. Uh, so essentially what you're doing here is you're uh, just doing your Stripe configuration. So you're gonna have to use your secret key uh, this is what your secret key looks like. Um, you can get this from your Stripe uh, API developer dashboard under API keys. Uh, this is just a fake key that I created for this demo. So this won't work. You're gonna have to get yours from your particular account. Uh, so after that, we are creating a Stripe object that we can work with, right? So we're, we're just doing new Stripe, Stripe client, passing in the secret key. Um, and then here we are Calling, uh, we're creating a new variable called checkout session, and we are making a call to the Stripe API to create uh, essentially a checkout session. Um, and this is all, uh, so you'll notice here that this is all the code that I took from the Stripe API website. And basically here, I'm just uh, defining some of, uh, some of the required parameters in order to get this to work correctly. Uh, so for payment method types, I'm just assigning that as card. So it'll just accept a Visa card. Uh, under line items, we just create a new array and then in there we define our price data. So our currency is Canadian, our product data, I'm just setting a name for the product data, which is t-shirts. Um, and then I'm setting the unit amount, which is the final price that I calculated through my custom calculations, right? And then we're setting the quantity to one. So in this case, I'm keeping the quantity to one. If I were to set this to 10, uh, Stripe would actually multiply my final price by 10, which I don't want. Uh, because I'm actually, um, took, I don't, I don't need Stripe to calculate any quantities for me. I don't want it to do that. So for this particular demo, I'm just keeping this to one. So that's something to uh, to keep in mind here when you're setting up the quantity. Um, so I even made a little note here. Stripe will multiply the final price by the quantity. So leave this set to one. Again, this is just for my particular purposes. Um, but in your instance, you might want Stripe to, you know maybe just take a unit amount and multiply it by the quantity. It can actually do that. Uh, but in my case, I didn't, uh, I don't, I don't need it to do that. So I just set the quantity to one. Uh, you set the mode to payment and then you define your success and your cancel URL. So these are essentially your redirect URLs. So if a customer makes a successful payment, they're gonna get redirected to the URL that's defined here under success URL. And if they cancel the order, it's gonna get redirected to this cancel URL, right? So once this is done, uh, checkout session once you call this code here and you create this variable you can then get the url from that from this checkout session by uh here we can just do checkout session url right <clears throat> so the stripe api is going to uh, essentially uh, create the checkout session and then it returns back uh, several pieces of data and one of those pieces of data is a url that you can use to redirect your customer to the stripe payout page or the stripe payment page um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Um, you'll see here that I'm doing a, a JSON, an echo JSON encode. This is actually sending this response back to JavaScript. Uh, and I'm sending back the checkout URL. So again, I'm getting it from that checkout session variable we created, and then I'm describing that URL data. Um, and that's it. So that's pretty much all you guys need to do. Um, did I say that right? 
Uh, that's pretty much all you need to do in order to get this to work correctly. Uh, it's pretty simple. So this is a, a great way to just create a, you know, if you're, if you have a customer or a client who's just selling one or two products on their site and they don't really need a full e-commerce setup, this is a great solution to offer them. Um, it doesn't take long to set up and it works perfectly. And, uh, and that's it. So guys, I hope you find, I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, if you did feel free to like, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, or comments feel free to post them down below i will be posting this code up on my website in the next few days so feel free to check out my website at digitalodyssey.ca slash tutorials and uh, you guys can uh, you guys can go there and and just uh you know reference the code there if you need to uh but that's it so thank you so much for watching and again i hope you guys found this video useful and take care